And good evening and welcome to Ray Edler Gymnasium in Convoy, Crestview and Allen East in a pivotal Northwest Conference Volleyball match tonight. Knights and Mustangs, Garrett Bantu alongside Dave Bowen. This is a big one, two teams, 13 and one, Dave. If Crestview can take care of business on their home floor, they clinch at least a share of the conference tonight. And uh, these two teams, Early on, obviously it was a collision course early, but a juicy matchup. You're right. Um, juicy, the pivotal word right there, Garrett. Great to be your wingman for this key Northwest Conference encounter between the Crestview Lady Knights, as you said, 13-1, and 5-0 and oh in conference play. Allen East 13-1, and 3-1 and one in NWC play. Allen East loss came to the Bluffton Pirates a team they fell to 3-0. to zero. Crestview, they just played Bluffton on Tuesday night. They took care of the Pirates 3-0. On paper, that says maybe Crestview's your favorite, but the paper doesn't matter right now. It's all about the girls getting it done on the court. Absolutely right. Anaya Prowitz is going to serve us in for Allen East, and we are underway, and immediately Maya Etzler Gets the work in with the opening kill of the game and our first blood on the Wandex Jewelry scoreboard tonight as the pendulum swings back to Crestview. Their starting lineup includes Callie Gregory, Casey Gregory, we just mentioned Etzler, then Addie Figley who just served it in. That ball's going to fall in for Alanis, but Haley McCoy and Josie Kulwicki round out the starting lineup. Libero Ellie Klein in that blue shirt checked in for McCoy early on. On the flip side for Allen East, as the serve comes in from Taylor Nichols, Joy Helser, Savannah Brooks, Kaylee Sasada, Soraya Jackson, reigning Northwest Conference Player of the Year, and then Nina Magoo, the starters for Allen East. And Soraya Jackson right there gets the kill. She leads Allen East with 201, make that 202 kills on the season. Almost four and a half percent, and Maya Exler gets her second of the evening. Crestview likes to spread it around, Dave. They have three players, an average better than three kills per set, while you have Kelly Gregory playing the center, and she's one of those three. Yes, you have the big three in Etzler, Gregory Kelly style, and then Addie Figley. Right now, Crestview going to Maya Etzler a lot. But there's Emily Lickley in the game setting for Crestview right now. Gets batted over the top. It will go out, set back by Allen East. So the serve will remain with Crestview as Casey Gregory drops back. Freshman in the lineup. And serves, and it's met by Prowitz. And pushed over by Brooks. And Jackson will send it over. And that gets tipped around and will go for Allen East. Yeah, you can't put the ball over there. That's a poor pass on Crestview's side of the net. You put it in front of Soraya Jackson. She's going to make you pay. She does right there. Not this match or this setup. Three to three right now. Serve goes up. And a hit for Etzler. Tips by Brooks and will go way out the back of the gym. And early on, Dave, we're just seeing the teeter-totter back and forth, much as we could have hoped for. Yeah, again, two evenly matched squads. Big night conference-wise for both squads to put themselves in position. There's Sasada sent it over, and it's going to fall on down for Allen East. Talking about Northwest Conference Championships. Allen East has tasted that once. Crestview 21 times. So again, Allen East, they haven't done it that often, but boy, they are put, they are right there uh, this year putting themselves in position. Here's the hammer for Kelly Gregory. That cross-court attack falls on in for Crestview. And you know, Coach Laura Basham, she's done a nice job with this Allen East program in her eighth year. Picked up her 100th win earlier this season against Lima Bath. Tammy Gregory in her 18th year picked up her 300th win just a couple games ago against Spencerville. And that is Jackson on the attack. And then knocked and blocked for Crestview. So Josie Kulwicki will continue to serve. 
Couple of coaches, as you mentioned, Dave, been around the game for a while and have had a, as you just heard there, tons of success here. And that's gonna be knocked over by Gregory. Tactical, to say the least. Keeps the rally going for the Knights. Absolutely. Uh, Callie Gregory, she picks up the kill there off the set, going across the net with it. She gets kills that way, and we will see her in the outside hitter position tonight as well. There's Soraya Jackson. And dug out by Kowicki, and then that third hit's going to go over for Ellie Klein. They're going to get Jackson in the middle. She goes with the little soft hit, and now Gregory again with the knockover. And that's going to hit the antenna. That is out. Yeah, Alan East knows where their bread is buttered. They're going to look to feed Soraya Jackson as much as possible. But right now, the Alan East Mustangs, they're going to make the call with the timeout. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Back after the timeout, Cressy with a little bit of a rally going up eight to four through the first set. Outside look for Figley. That'll drop on in. And the this little streak continues for the Knights. Yeah, not a perfect set by Gregory that time, but Figley able to play with it and hit it with her left hand and find the open spot. That was a great timeout by Coach Basham right there, seeing things leak away a little bit. But so far, Crestview gets the first point out of the timeout, and there's Figley with a hard hit. A dugout nicely in the back row, and a second chance attack. Joy Helser get, got over there and put it where... Nobody for Crestview was to break up this little streak for the Knights. And now Soraya Jackson will drop back and serve. Three-time All-Conference player, including Player of the Year honors a year ago. And there are three three-time All-Northwest Conference players in this match. Callie Gregory, Maya Etzler, the two from Crestview. And then honorable mention selections from both squads last year in Savannah Brooks for Allen East and Hattie Pigley for Crestview. Callie Gregory also got a third team all Ohio nod as she serves it in for the Knights. Pushed over by Nichols and returned by Crestview. Pigley adds another to her talent. So Coach Basham has already used one timeout, down six, early on in set one, a little bit of danger zone, but that is a great help right there for the Mustangs as Gregory hits it in the net. Now let's see if Alan East can put a little run together of their own. Nina McGoo behind the serving line. So rare service error for Crestview. This one's set up and it'll be right on that red line by Adeline Figley. Nice set and spike combination. Thanks to Lee's famous recipe, chicken. Addie Figley, the junior, she's third on the kill list for Crestview at 126 coming into the match behind Etzler and Gregory. Klein has to keep that one up as Sasada bumped it over the top and a big block up front for Alan East. This one's gonna be a pass outside. And Sasada digs it out again. Now Jackson with an underhand pass, tipped over for Brooks. And Crestview, a little miscommunication there, but in front of that 10-foot line, falls in for an Allen East score. Great block to get the point, to help Allen East get that point by 22. Taylor Nichols, great defense, led to the point for the Mustangs. Serve for Anaya Prowant, and she'll get another try as Crestview powers it out the back. Tighten it up this first set to 12 to eight. And sent back into play, Klein receives Gregory to Etzler, and Etzler tried to get that rebound and it goes wide, getting Alan East another score. Great dig by Savannah Brooks. Helps Alan East get the point. She leads the Mustangs with 215 of those for them this year. A jump set from Gregory sets up Figley, and that's going to get shoved over for a Crestview tally. 
Callie Gregory, as you said, a first-team NWC selection. You're seeing two of the best in Soraya Jackson and Callie Gregory. Gregory, both a physical talent, but very, very smart. Mental acuity right there, tipping that one over, putting it in the open spot. Magoo with the serve, receive, and the attack up front from Brooks turns into an Allen East a, a point off of that volley. Nice kill by Savannah Brooks. She's second on the Allen East squad with 127 of them. We see it in play right there. Gregory goes outside for Kennedy Kreider. Now we got a whistle to kill this play. Double hit for Allen East. Double hit, so it's a good time to share who our officiating crew is this evening, Garrett. Lindsey Tim on the ladder, Connie Steinbrunner at the net. Your line judges, Kent McClure and Mary Alvarez. There's a serve in for Casey Gregory. Attack for Aldi's Gregory with the dig. And Lickley sets up another attack and score for Crestview. Maya Epsler again. Getting on top of that, hitting it at the high point, puts that ball down right at the 10-foot line. Allen East unable to get a block at the net on that short set. Such an offensive weapon, Garrett. 15-10 on that Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. And a nice diving dig. And a return for Ellie Klein. Lickley goes out for Gregory. She'll just bump it over. And a set up for Jackson. Now there, now Gregory. Tried to lob that in down. And this is gonna get a couple of underhands up and missed time for Etzler. She just has to tap it over. And you know, whether that was hammered at 90 miles an hour or, or not, it'll go in the box score as a kill. Exactly, and they're all line drives in the scorebook <laughs> the next day. But a lot of soft change-ups there by Gregory Jackson and Etzler in that volley. And a big-time swing for Savannah Brooks. Turns into an Allen East score. That Lee's famous recipe chicken set and spike combo turns it into a 16-11 contest in the first set. Yeah, I think Brooks is a big key for Allen East tonight. Crestview knows about Jackson, and right there she is on the block. And if Brooks can come through with... Uh, a nice stat line from the kill category. That's going to be nothing but very, very helpful for Alan East as they compete in tonight's contest. Off-target pass set that score up. As the rally continues, here's Etzler from the outside. Nothing that Anaya Prowett could do at a face full of that attack. That set and spike brought up for Lee's famous recipe chicken. Maya Etzler with another kill. She's going to Ashland to play volleyball, as is Soraya Jackson, and they're going to be roommates, Garrett. How about that? Bringing it back alive here in this one as attack is whistled dead on the Jackson attack. Yeah, you have Soraya Jackson, Maya Etzler competing like crazy out there tonight, and that's what we love about high school volleyball, and they're going to be teammates in a few months at Ashland University. The Eagles out there. There's Gregory. Big old hit blocked up front, but it's going to go out of the boundary. Yeah, Joy Helzer does a nice job being at the net, but so much force. That was a live arm right there from Callie Gregory. Forces that block all the way out of bounds to the other side. That's impressive both ways. Serve goes and received there from Bren, Bren Richardson. And it turns into an Allen East points. I like Soraya Jackson's attack to the ball right there. Quick feet. Not much of a setup, and she hammered that, Garrett. Great hit by Jackson. Brings the Mustangs within four. This is set up. And Gregory, that jump set that she can so dangerously turn into an attack as she did there. She'll set it up outside. This one is... Attacked by Figley, but then blocked and goes out of bounds. Joy Helser with another block. Does a really nice job getting the point for the Mustangs. Gregory goes for Figley as she just shoves it near side left. Nobody there for the Stangs. That's such a tough play. 
Hattie Figley makes it look easy, but any player that can go down the line as far as across the net like that, very impressive. There's an attack from Nina Magoo, dug by Gregory. She comes uh, full force from the back row, but the Mustangs are able to keep that ball in the air. Figley, that falls right in front of Jackson. Big cross-court setup from Gregory. Finish off by Figley. Great defense by Allen East. Just too much offense from Crestview right there. Gregory serves it back in. Sasadas pass for Nichols, and that drops in. Taylor Nichols with the kill. Does a nice job there. Again, just like Crestview, you've got Figley, Etzler, and Gregory. Allen East, you've got Jackson, Nichols, and Brooks all doing a nice job at the net. A big swing from Figley is too strong. And just like that, three-point contest. This first set far from decided as we get near the late stages. Just five points needed for Crestview. And they're going to get one right there off of the serve that was too long. It's kind of the match, you know, where serving, you want to put yourself in position to make the, t the defense be defensive, if you will, but you got to get it in. And right there, I'm I'm able to do so. Crestview returns to the favor. You know, looking at the service numbers, Allen East slightly better. Serve a little bit better than 92% tonight. Crestview with a couple of service errors in the game to Allen East with a one. And that's going to go out the back again also. Nina Magoo with the hit. I like the aggressiveness. Just doesn't fall for her, though. But again, this is not a game for the weak of heart tonight, Dare. Both teams hitting the ball hard at each other. And that'll be an ace. Figley got that ball to die near the end. Fell right on that end line. And the junior. That's Crestview just on the cusp of a first cent victory. And not so fast as Savannah Brooks. That's a real nice job again. That was off the second hit that spike was. Didn't quite have her footwork the way she would love to have it, but still gets a lot of power into the ball with a good arm swing. Gregory, back set, going for Casey Gregory, and that drops in, set point on the way for Crestview. They'll get Emily Lickley back in the game, and Gregory will rotate back to serve. And in the air and into the net. Again, you got to get your serve in when you're playing a quality opponent. It's like a breath of fresh air for the other team when you don't do so in momentum. Such a big part of volleyball. Brooks' serve. Now here's Gregory on the attack. Dug by Brooks. Sasana sets Jackson. And we got a whistle at the net. Looks like we had somebody in the twine for Crestview. Maya Epsler tried to get up there and be a blocker against her future roommate, but gets in the net as a result. Klein receives. Lickley goes outside for Callie Gregory, and that'll do it for set number one for Crestview. 25-21 on that Loudich Jewelry scoreboard. We will take the timeout and return for set number two from Ray Etzler Gymnasium here on WOSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's brings you tonight our Spike and our Scent sponsorships. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Garrett Mansfield and Dave Bowen with you, returning for set number two here at Crestview. Key Northwest Conference battle between the 5-0 Lady Knights and the 3-1 Lady Mustangs from Allen East. Both are 13-1 overall. Crestview on the year, they've lost just six sets all season, eight consecutive 3-0 set wins. 
Meanwhile, Allen East is rolling a seven match winning streak. Leafs just seen good volleyball through that first set that went 25-21. And the first point goes to Crestview on a hit that was too strong for Allen East. And Ellie Klein will set up the second volley. You're right, both squads, a lot of success this year with just the one loss. Crestview has not lost a set since back on September 11th against Parkway. And just recently in talking with Coach Basham, she said their best overall team victory was against Elmwood, uh, a quality opponent, which they took down three to zero. So again, both squads on a roll. Among the, the only loss for Crestview, we mentioned Alan East's only loss was to Bluffton, a team Crestview just defeated earlier in the week. But it was a five cent loss to Coldwater. And the Knights even took care of a new Bremen team. Now some faces have come and gone for the Cardinals since last year, but that's who knocked out the Lady, the Lady Knights in the state final four a year ago. That's absolutely correct. That cold water match, Crestview was right there and set four up 21-19. Momentum switch, cold water won set four and took set five to win three to two. Huge block up front, Kennedy Kreider. From that first set, um, Garrett, Callie Gregory had four kills. Maya Etzler and Addie Figley both had six for Crestview for Allen East. So Raya Jackson had four kills and Savannah Brooks had four kills and three digs. Thanks to our stat man, Brad Hughes. Serve comes back in for Crestview. Jackson just has a third hit that one over. And a Gregory sir, or a set goes to Casey Gregory, and she's able to spot that one down line. And inside the chalk, 4-1 start for Crestview. Yeah, inside the chalk. I like that call, Garrett. Right on the hardwood where nobody is. Serve met by Nina Magoo, and then Jackson gets a big swing in. And we're going to get... It was going to land either way, but Crestview is going to get charged in the a little too close to the net. Soraya Jackson, just such velocity on her spike. Does a great job. Excellent arm swing. Hits it hard. Etzler. Gregory gave it right in her wheelhouse. She was able to get over top of that ball. Great communication between Callie and Maya, and they don't say a word to each other. They just have a feel. They've played together forever. Great short set and a point. Another nice play there by Allen East. Kaylee Sasada gets that one over the net. And just when things were slipping away right there, four to one, you, you don't want to start a set that way. Allen East has climbed back, fought their way right back into it, just down two here early on. And Sasada that goes back to serve as Callie Gregory tries to go cross court. And it's going to go a little bit wide on that near sideline. And talking with Coach Basham, she said that's one of the strengths, if not the most valuable strength of this team. They do not show negativity. They fight. They show great grit. And they have a, a huge amount of togetherness, Garrett. They really look out for each other, uh, fight for each point, don't get down when they're behind. And that's a sign of a winner. And obviously, when you're 13 and 1, you possess those qualities. Second serve is air of the game for Allen East. And a receive air on the other side of the Casey Gregory serve, or excuse me, the Etzler serve. Crestview will continue this rally. Up seven to four in the second set. To the air for Etzler. Sasada sets Jackson. Got a little under that attack. Lofted it into the air. And not going to make it down before it goes outside that red tape. You're right. You're not going to see that happen very often for Soraya Jackson. Got under the ball just a tad. A little bit of a miss hit. And as a result, it goes out of bounds. But she's going to keep swinging. No doubt about that. Here, they come at her again. Right back to Jackson. But it's going to be blocked out of bounds. It'll be good for a kill for Jackson. She didn't miss that one. Does what you should do with it. Puts herself behind the serving line as a result with the Mustangs getting the point trailing eight to five here in the early going. That's what good players really do. Yeah, absolutely. Not scared away by a little setback. Goes right back to the well and that puts your confidence right back on track early on. 
Set up for Kelly Gregory, and that's going to get inside the stripe. A little bit of whatever you can do, I can do better. Jackson and Gregory going at it. And again, Callie Gregory with the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Hard Spike. She's not a full-time killer from the spike line, but she does lead Crestview with 145 coming into this match. She's going to drop that one down. Kind of faked out the set right in the middle of the Alanese defense. And Josie Kulwicki will serve again with Crestview up 10-5 on that Loudex Jewelry scoreboard. Josie Kulwicki, the leading server for Crestview at 97%. So Sada back set and a diving attempt for Casey Gregory. And they're going to even get Crestview the point there. It looked like he had Gregory in the net, but then two hits on the other end as well. Whole lot happening on that point, so we're going to take the timeout. And catch our breaths also. 11 5 Crestview, set two. Get from Ray Etzler Gymnasium on WOSN. Our second set resumes here at Crestview. Ray Etzler Gymnasium, the Knights with a little bit of a sizable advantage for at least for this contest we've had tonight. And that's going to grow by one. Yeah, good timeout by Coach Basham right there again. Um, stem the tide a little bit, trying to. She's got a question about the call. Uh, but again, 11-5, uh, got to try and settle things down with her squad a little bit. Crestview gets the first point out of the timeout. Let's see if Alan Neese can rebound here. Set for Crestview, and it's McCoy. It got dug out and went over, but she's able to knock it right down. So the sophomore, Haley McCoy. Does a nice job coming in off the bench when she gets in the match, and her rotation takes advantage of her opportunities. And they're going to give that one to Allen East. Two touches as McCoy tried to set that one up from the front row. She knew. She made the air right away. Again, that's not her job as a hitter, but the pass, she had to go for it. It was right to her, unable to come away with it. And they're going to give that one to Crestview. Kind of an instinctual in from the line judge, but immediately said, you know. Let's get the call yep. right. That's the main thing, and I believe that is what occurred. It was very close for Casey Gregory, almost came in contact with that. And that time, big spike from Savannah Brooks comes yep. right at Gregory. Again, Savannah Brooks, again, sharing the wealth a little bit. Gets that kill, the second leading killer, if you will, for Allen East coming into the match. Serve there for Prowitt. That's going to get tipped over by Addie Figley. Crestview continues to roll. and. Now they're starting to create a little bit of separation here, Dave. In this second set, you know, you, folks that might be tuning into a lot of the volleyball coverage throughout the year, I'll harp on it again. This second set is always one that kind of divides and tells us where the rest of the match is going to go. And right now, Crestview starting to impose their will a little bit, and they're going to force the second timeout taken by Allen East already. In the second set, 16 to 7 will return for the remainder of set two on WOSN. Back to Crestview, where the Knights have already forced Allen East to take two timeouts in this second set. And they're going to fire one outside the lines and even got almost went through the arms of a Crestview defender, but a 10 point advantage far and away the largest lead of the match through the first two sets. And there is another attack for Allen East. And tipped off a Jackson as Figley finishes off the attack. 
Coach Basham called that timeout a communication, a rare communication error on all Allen East side of the net. Coach Gregor has got to be real happy with how her squad has come out of the timeout, continuing to put the pressure on the Mustangs. Pass from Prowlett to Brooks. Klein goes outside and he goes off the top of the, the tape and it bumped over Anita Magoo with a one-handed stab. Callie Gregory returns it for Crestview. And now Jackson from the back row. Interesting enough, you have both of them playing from back row at the current rotation, and Gregory sends it a little wide to the right from her vantage points. Yeah, both teams playing, hitting at each other, into the back row, no blocks at the net, but Crestview having a little more success at the net with the spike. We see it right there. And Maya Etzler gets a little assist from the top of the net to settle that one down to the floor. Again, Allen East back row defense is pretty good. It's just that they are being stressed, <laughs> being challenged back there a lot. They gotta try and get more blocks at the net. It's sort of like Muhammad Ali and George Foreman mm -hmm. and Ali's doing the rope a dope and he's just taking hit after hit um, and waiting for George Foreman to get tired. Back in 74, the problem is, is I don't think George Foreman's gonna get tired tonight. <laughs> Well, tonight he's probably in a position to keep his feet up, right? There you go. 20 to eight is your crest view advantage. There's Jackson, and that gets blocked up front. So Maya Etzler wins that battle as she gets the block on Soraya Jackson. As we said earlier, they're going to be roommates together at Ashland University. That's going to be served in. And it'll be called a lift against Crestview. Spana Brooks drops to serve for the Mustangs. Line drive and really had to get pried out from the floor by Gregory. And then a late third hit goes in. Now Jackson, great dig by Klein. That'll be met for Prowitz. Pass for Jackson, and she drops the hammer. Nice underhand pass. Started with Sasada, and finish off on that Lee's famous recipe chicken kill combo there for the Alanese Mustangs. Yeah, they do a great job of going to the bread and butter, Soraya Jackson. And it's like the NFL back in the 90s, 80s, you go to that running back, running back, running back, and that's what they're doing here. And uh, it's been successful for them when they've been able to execute it. But again, maybe a little too little, too late here in set number two. I like the bread and butter there. Like, okay. that, they'll be right on the side for your Crispy Lee's famous recipe chicken. Absolutely. Dropped in there for Maya Etzler and the Knights. Two scores away from a dominant second set. So put so put the Mustangs up against the wall here. Going into set three as Jackson trying to get those swings in, but that's gonna put set point set up for Crestview. And Casey Gregory serves, Prowitt to Sasada, and the attack of Magoo is blocked up front, and it's 25-10 after set number two on that Londix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview takes a two cent to none lead as we head into set number three from Ray Esler Gymnasium on WOSN. Tonight's Spike and Set sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Located in Lima, Wapak, Delvis, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Well, home cooking for the Crestview Knights tonight. A couple of set wins of 25-21. The first set was very competitive, very back and forth, but the Knights showed some separation in set two. Dave Bowen, 25-10. Mustangs will get the serve to start the third set, but uh, the numbers really do go Crestview's way after that second set win. Yeah, the big three for Crestview. 
Gregory with four kills, Maya Etzler with three, Addie Figley with three, and for Alan Eason set two, Soraya Jackson had four kills, and Anaya Proent had three digs, the libero, one of the most improved players on this Alan East squad, according to Coach Basham. Crestview had 13 kills overall in set two, and Alan East was six. Edsler got a back into the action to get the first score. There's Gregory, the long set to Casey Gregory. Kept in the air for Bryn Richardson. And now Crestview with Kennedy Kreider sending that one long and wide. With the score one to one right now, this Allen East, they've been behind at the beginning of set number one and set number two. They need to make a statement right here. Try and put some pressure on Crestview. Again, see if you can get momentum to your side of the net. Unfortunately, putting the ball in the net right there is gonna work in their favor. Our JV game tonight, uh, won by Crestview in a three set thriller, two to one. The Knights take out Allen East JV action style. Jackson in the middle, couldn't quite get that to clear the net. So right there, Dave, you, you mentioned that 1-1 one, one score. The last two have gone to Crestview. And that one goes off top of the net, backspins and falls in for an ace for Casey Gregory. Again, I love the positive non-verbals for Alan East. They're clapping their hands. They're still in this match, but you can't fall behind here in set number three, down 2-0 already. And there's a good one. You'll take it any way you can. And Bryn Richardson, she finds the hardwood on Crestview's side of the net. You'll take that point, and now you're only down two, and you're serving. Let's see if they can cut into that lead right away here. And you don't see that happen very often. It, and where she dug that out and got to, that's that's where the server will hop in defensively, and that open space was still there because it happened so quickly. And they're gonna have to redo the point here as Alan East had a Soraya Jackson, Jackson go went down. down. Yeah, Lindsay Tim with the call, gonna replay the point, just making sure that everyone's safe. Good call by the official on the ladder, Lindsay Tim. Didn't see how that developed, but looked down and found a Jackson, Jackson on the floor. <coughs> Lickley sets for Gregory. And then Brooks will push it over. Now Maya Etzler, dug by Richardson, still in the air, but Magoo had to really get to her left to keep that ball alive and wasn't able to get it to Jackson enough. Yeah, can't flaunt the effort though, Nina Magoo comes over towards the ladder, does everything she can to bring it back in. Unfortunately for the Mustangs, I'm unable to get the point. A great effort. Etzler serves that one into the net. It'll keep it five to three as Jackson drops back to serve it for the Mustangs. Again, only down two here. If they can get a couple points, put some pressure on the Knights, there's one. And I'm sure that's what Coach Basham talked about in the timeout between sets. Hey, just keep digging, keep digging. Let's see what can happen here a little bit. Put, put some pressure on these Lady Knights. Pass to Gregory. Magoo kept it up. Bumped over for Taylor Nichols. And back to Gregory. She tries to push it to the back corner. Gregory a third time and it's dug out by Savannah Brooks, and blocked up front. A great volley we got going on. And McCoy puts that one right on Jackson. A plethora of riches for Coach Gregory as the sophomore, Haley McCoy, comes in. We've seen her have a block and a kill in set number two, does so right here in set three. Kaylee Sasada sets it up for Nichols and a big block in the front right. So again, Crestview stretching the lead back to three. Every time Alan East puts a little heat on him, makes that call, Crestview answers. There's Jackson on the serve received. Sasada tries to keep Crestview sleeping there. And then the block 
Helser was there with Nichols and couldn't quite reel it in. Addie Figley, when she can come from the left side and have her footwork down to a tee, she puts a lot of velocity on that volleyball, blasted into the block there, comes up with the point. Nichols blocked up front, but still up for Allen East. Hit over by Jackson. Now Callie Gregory slaps that one over the end. Tipped Go, by Brooks. Yeah. Goes to the corner, eight ball corner pocket, Garrett. I think she called it as well on the second hit. Just puts so much pressure on the defense when you're not just going bump set spike. There's the attack for Magoo. Good diving dig for Colwicky. And here are the Mustangs trying to. I think if you're Coach Basham, in. yeah, you got to be thinking about a timeout right now, and she's going to take it. Allen East with the timeout in set number three. It's WOS Stan. It's top notch high school volleyball, Northwest Conference style. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Loudex Jewelry, family owned and operated for over 70 years. South Shannon Street in Van Wert. Online at loudex.com. And it reads now after that kill for Addie Figley, 11-4 for the Crestview Lady Knights who have a two cent to none victory. 14 is the tally they would take to sweep this one for Crestview. And clinch at least a share of the Northwest Conference title for what would be a third consecutive year. Allen East, one of the two, one of the three teams should say, tied for second place along with Bluffton and Lipsick. They're going to get a point right back there to kind of end the long rally for the Lady Knights. Yeah, nice play there by Joy Helser to get the point for Allen East. Yeah, Crestview has won 20 matches in a row in conference action up to this point. And powered over for Figley. Not a whole lot. The Mustangs could have done on the other side. First look at Ella Downing in the contest in the back middle for Allen East. Up off the bench here for the Mustangs. Nichols fires that one out the back. Got underneath of the, the set. Callie Gregory, that ch jump set. And it can't be handled by Alanese. They weren't even able to return that one. And it'll go back for Crestview again. Alanese still have Spencerville and Lipsick on the Northwest Conference schedule as that one's tipped off by Downing. I know it's a tough situation. You want to save that timeout. But if you're Coach Basham here in the third set, you might need to use it a little earlier than you would like to. You want to have your, your squad stem this tie, but Crestview is on a roll right now. Sasada sets up Nichols and a diving dig for Klein keeps it in the air. And Brooks comes up. Did it get tipped? It did sure indeed. Did. That'll be a Mustang score. Again, Savannah Brooks has really done a nice job getting some kills tonight. Second leader, second statistical leader in the kill category behind Jackson. Here goes Gregory. And nice cross-court attack for Brooks again. Yeah, another nice hit there. She's big timing from the left side. Gets that one across the net. Off the block, point for Allen East. Serve goes in for Anaya Prowitz. And there's the setup for Addie Figley right in the middle. That leads famous recipe chicken to spike and set. For Crestview. And that's one of the uh, pieces that Crestview volleyball fans have noticed over the course of the season. Figley has been great from the left side, but Coach Gregory's moved her to the middle a little bit as well. There's another one for Figley in the middle back. 17-7 on the Londix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview. After that first set, looked like we were going to be settled in for a while. 
given a five-set match a year ago over in Allen East that went Crestview's way. And it looked like this was gonna be as advertised. However, Crestview, they're kind of showing where the separation is, where that, that first on down of the conference and a lot of the chat about how good this team could be. Not losing a whole lot from last year, but a, a very vital member of the team, Lacey McCoy, all conference and pretty much anything she puts a uniform on for as a knight. But they yeah, are they're able to reload <laughs> and be right back where they left off. You're exactly right. Uh, the conference the coaches were happy to see Lacey McCoy no longer be eligible to put on a <laughs> uniform for Crestview. 12 varsity letters in three sports. But you're right, Crespi returned five starters and then brought in Casey Gregory as a freshman, the coach's daughter and younger sister of Callie. And they have not missed a beat and they definitely have a goal of making a long tournament run again this year. Last year's Final Four is the second for Crestview in volleyball. The other one would have been a 1991. 1991, and the head coach, Tammy Gregory, was a sophomore on mm. that squad, starter. Good note. See, this is why we keep you around, Dave. Okay, fair enough. We, we get all the great nuggets. Beyond the box scorer, Dave Bowen. Well, it's just a pleasure to be working with you and calling games for all of the fans on WSN and the Allen East Mustang fans, Crestview fans, great Northwest Conference battle. Been around this league for quite a while. I can share the sentiment. Always a pleasure and an honor to be able to do this. As Allen East looking for one last charge here. And there Casey Gregory drops it in the front left. They've, that's been a popular play tonight for Crestview. Recognizing the vacancy up there in that part of the court. And it looks to be well, well, well practiced, well executed. And a 21-9 in the third set on the cusp of a straight set win. The attack there from Savannah Brooks goes out the back. And she's been a player tonight, Dave, that has really stepped up and played it very well. Yeah, I like Brooks a lot. Hits it hard there again, overcooks it. But man, I like her tenacity, her effort, her, her just willingness to do whatever her team needs her to do. Also a senior on this Allen East team. That one goes down for Crestview. Maya Etzler with another kill. Allen East, still division three. Division four for Crestview. Yep, so they'll go different ways correct. tournament time. Mm -hmm. It kind of tells the tale from a year ago. Allen East, 19 victories to five losses, but were defeated in sectionals. A very tough bracket to break out of. Yes, yeah, so we see Jackson go down the line right there again. Just, they keep coming whenever they get the opportunity. It's just been too much Crestview this evening. Here's Brooks on the serve. Backs it, Callie to Casey Gregory, and tipped by Prowlin. She just wasn't able to frame that one up to keep it in the air. And now Casey Gregory will drop back with Crestview on match point. They won the second set 25 to 10. Looking to replicate it. And Casey Gregory's ace does just that. An impressive victory tonight for the Crestview Lady Knights. They go 25-21 and then don't let Alanis score 21 points in the next two sets to get the straight set win that makes nine straight of that variety for the Lady Knights to improve to 14 and one. And oh, by the way, they clinch at least a share of their 22nd Northwest Conference Volleyball Championship. And they're not gonna wanna share it, so they're gonna keep working on getting better every single day. But this Allen East Lady Mustang squad, talking to Coach Basham before uh, the match tonight, she just said, my squad 
uh, works hard, regardless of what the scoreboard says. We have great team chemistry. There's togetherness here. It was on display tonight. Yes, they got beat 3-0, but the nonverbals were ne never negative. They were there for each other. They're going to be just fine. Um, they're still going to keep working hard here, see what might happen in the league as far as a runner-up position. But Crestview, you're right. They have some lofty goals, a Northwest Conference championship, and then they want to they want to get back down to UD Arena. Now, there's a lot of things that have to happen before that, that can occur, Gare. A lot of serves, a lot of spikes, a lot of defense. But that is a goal that this squad has. They will put themselves to the test this Saturday as they are involved in the Lady Night Volleyball Invitational sponsored by Leland Smith right here at Crestview High School. An invitational that Crestview has never won. Top quality opponents. They're going to have to bring their A game. And we're going to have the semifinals and the finals of that invitational right here on WOSN. Right, good to see. Next conference game to try to go perfect on the regular season in the conference would be Delphus Jefferson on a Tuesday night. Well, that'll wrap it up for us here at Crestview. Lady Knights again, that final tally on Loud X Jewelry scoreboard, 25-21, 25-10, 25-10. We thank Loud X Jewelry, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, for being our partners here tonight as well. All the folks here at Crestview appreciate the hospitality. Jacob O'Neill up on our cameras as well, who will edit this one up for us also. He's Dave Bowen. I'm Garrett Mansfield saying uh, so long from Ray Etzler Gymnasium in Crestview.